and welcome back. Now, as part of, part of our um, LED love fest, um, we've just done a whole video on the Max 7219 and these eight individual seven segment LEDs. And if you remember, we left it with it displaying some predefined characters, which was HELP and 7219. Now, of course, we could take this a lot further in saying, well, what other characters could we display on here if we didn't use the help within the 7219? But I think we'll just put this to one side for now because that's enough to sort of get people going, get their projects off the ground. I think it's about time we looked at this one, which is um, also a Max 7219 chip controller on it. I don't know if we can just well, see that on there. Now, this has also got 64 LEDs on there, which is what the Max 7219 can control. Um, it's exactly the same over here, but spread out more, but there's 64 on here. And if you've seen my test videos 1 and 2, you'll have seen some scrolling messages on here. But on one of these, it doesn't really work very well. So, what we really need is more of these. And, guess what's turned up in the post today? All the way from Singapore and uh, GearBest. This was sent out on the 30th of December 2015. It's now the 26th today. So that took um, less than four weeks actually. So uh, let's see what we've got. So we've got uh, three more of those. Perhaps I should say perhaps three very similar ones because I don't know if they're exactly the same or not. So let's, uh, let's get one open and, and see how similar it is. Oh, don't you just love that crackly plastic? Right, there we are, there it is. Um, now that's the original on my left, this one here. And this is the um, one I've just received. And I think we can safely say they are identical. Apart from these little pins at the top, which of course I've never bothered to solder in here, in the original one because I had nothing to connect them to but now I do so I'm going to have to solder some in myself. So what we can then do is connect four of these up together and have quite a, a nice long messaging area in which to display our message. Um, so I think that's the very next project we're going to do. Right, let's get on. And welcome back. Now, as you can see, today we're going to have a bit of fun with some scrolling characters on the Max 7219 controlled LED display, which is one of these. There's four here. One, two, three, four. All controlled by a Max 7219. And we're going to look at, first of all, how easy it is just to control this scrolling text um, with a bit of code and a standard library. And then we're going to look at, in a little bit more detail, if you want to go into it, how you can put your own custom characters on here and what it actually takes to move them then across the screen. Let's see what it takes then to set this up from scratch and it is a lot easier than you might think. So here we are a few months later actually and I've got the four individual LED matrices screwed to this board, uh, connected up and we're going to go through how these are connected up because I noticed on the Arduino forum there was some confusion. These, these wires are particularly ugly in my view. So the in input comes into this one here, and then the output, which you notice on those little pins in the um, intro, have to come all the way through underneath here, and then back into this one, so they sort of cascade, and then output from here goes all the way to here, and then from here to here. That is particularly ugly, I think, um, even if the actual scrolling characters is rather nice all these wires and things not very good now I saw this one here on um, eBay now isn't this a neater a job I mean this is this is pretty good actually you got the four individual units one input and then the can the actual uh, controls are all done for you but there is a huge problem with this one when I connected this up instead of this what happened was instead of the scrolling happening from left to right like this it was actually going like this so downwards and then sort of down this one and then down this one and then down this one sort of snaking across these because the the orientation of these is not like this 
they should be like that and then that one should be next to it and then that one should be next to that one and so on but they've reorientated these and I get a feeling this might be quite difficult to work with I'm not a hundred percent sure yet because quite frankly I haven't had a chance to really play about with these but normally when you send something to one of these you say for this column send out a whole row of stuff which is why we can do one of these columns at a time and build up a whole character or word moving across the screen so I'm going to have to put this one side this lovely compact unit and when and if I ever get the time and well technical expertise to get it running um, I'll let you know in the meantime then we're back to this unit or these units all four of them controlled by these rather ugly wires but at least if that was in a box or some kind of enclosure that would work just fine and of course you don't have to continue a scrolling message like this you can have anything you like so let's have a very quick look at the code I'm not here to teach you how to write the code for this one necessarily because we're using a, a fairly standard library I say fairly standard I just cannot find the original library that I used here there is one on the internet in fact if we go to it now um, this is the library we're using you see this uh, maxmatrix.h that's the header and as far as I know it could be this one this is in github I'll obviously put the link down below underneath this video now this has got uh, a number of other items on here look for the Raspberry Pi, well, in fact, there's two for Pis there. Uh, this one here, read me, okay, and then scrolled, you know. So, frankly, I'm not 100% sure what's happening there. But as I say, I'll put a link to this one. But what I'll also do is put the library that I've actually got uh, in my code. So it's this one here, the actual real one. I'll include that in the comments below here right so at the bottom of this video you'll see a link to my Dropbox account and, and that's where you download it from just in case they are different so this library I'm, we're not going to go into how the library is working it does require three pins defined for the data the max CS and clock and I'm going to have to zoom in real close now on the actual um, actual unit itself to about see that so let's move this across because this is all stuck down um, the five pins going into this one here VCC ground fine left and right uh, data in uh, chip select which I think he said um, they call it something else in the library I've changed it back to chip select and of course the uh, clock so those are the five wires two of which are for power, three are for the data. I mean, it's a fairly standard thing. Now, on the output, which we can barely see, frankly, in fact, you won't be able to see, but imagine these wires, imagine these wires here, just running straight through, one for one. Okay, so they come out at the back here again, and you literally bring them round and back in at exactly the same um, position. So on the output here you've got VCC, ground, data in, CS and clock. They are marked up but they're underneath this chip so you can't actually see it. So just bring them around and put them straight back in here as you did the first one. And then repeat that for as many as you got. Okay, so that's how to wire them up. And on our board here, on the Arduino board, here are our three data lines. And in the code, we've defined them as the data is pin 8, this orange one here. The chip select is pin 9, that's the yellow one here. And finally, the clock is pin 10. That's the green one. So you can see them matching up here. So the code window here is showing us that um, here are the three, the three pins that we've decide, defined. This is just a, a variable to say how slowly the characters scroll across the screen and I say I've got it down to 15 milliseconds between characters any more and it really whizzes along any less than that um, it, it stops a bit you know stops start because there's quite a few characters been displayed this one's quite important it says how many of these um, LED matrices have you got in use so it knows how often to send the data down that's where we define the actual object 
that's a buffer for retrieving data from um, our flash memory. There's an initial message, but um, if I type something into here, look, if I put in um, a message here, what is it? hello world, and press enter. Now what that's going to do, when, when this message has stopped scrolling here, it's going to pick that up and uh, show it on here now. There we are, hello world, and then back to the original. That's just a little tweak I made to this program. I think this program might have started off live as that original one shown here. Might have done. Can't swear to it. I've had it for so long now. As you saw in the beginning, I've had these units now since December 2015. So there we are. So um, this little construct here, by the way, in case you're wondering, it's saying if I've defined something called debug, then we can do all this serial printout and debugging of our code. The define is actually right at the top of the code here, and I've actually commented it out because I didn't want things cluttering up this window here while we were doing it. But uh, it's a useful mechanism where you can switch all the debugging code off in one go if you want. Then, um, what else are we doing? So we're defining our pins as output, clear uh, initializing the unit. That's that's. This thing here, we're actually initializing it. Well, the max 7219s, anyway. Clearing or any message in the buffer. The intensity, you can go from 0, 1, which is quite dim, although not as dim as you might think, and up to 15, which is really eye-searingly bright. On this camera, I should say, as you're watching this right now, and I'm watching it on the monitor, I mean, it's all looking a bit washed out. I mean, you're actually seeing there, even as I'm shielding it with my hands, fairly white looking characters. Let me assure you that in real life, these are nice deep red. It's obviously just some kind of technology thing between what's being shown here and what's being picked up by this camera. But these are not white. These are absolutely lovely, gorgeous red, as in as would any other red LED show properly. Okay, so moving on. Now we have a loop here. This is the little bit of um, I've just tweaked. I'm saying, look, if you've type something into this serial window here, this area here, grab all that, display it to this display. If not, just go and get the standard message that we defined a little bit up here. Where was it? This one, this message here on line 124, that one, and display that instead. So that's all that this is doing. You can simplify that if you want, and then a little delay before it goes on for the next loop. This print uh, string with shift and print char with shift, and what else have we got, anything else? Uh, no, that's probably about it. They're all from the standard library or the standard example. I've not really fiddled about with those too much. It's really just to get this up and running so that you can buy these from the Far East or wherever you're gonna get them from, plug them in, know how the wiring works, know what pins you need to use, and have something that works out of the box. Okay, so that's all you need to do. I'll just show you that again if I type something into the serial window. If I type in there Arduino programming is fun and press enter. As soon as this one here stops, you'll pick that up. There we go. Arduino programming is fun. Correct. And then a bit of a corrupted message from the last one. Never mind about that. This is just demo playing about. But you can see how easy it is to put a, a message on here using out-of-the-box code, as we've shown you here. Pretty much out-of-the-box. I mean, I'll put in loads of comments for you. And using the serial window to type stuff into if you want, rather than having this default message displayed. Okay, that's all we can say about that, unless we're going to delve into how we're going to display our own characters on here. Just how easy is it to do? And the answer is, hmm... Not, not super difficult, but you do have to understand how to address each uh, one of these individual units. So if you want to delve in a bit deeper, see you in part two. I hope you're finding these videos interesting and useful. You can leave comments down below and also click that little button that says subscribe. Okay, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. That was easy.